and welcome to another starter video. My name is Stefan Eriksson and today we're going to be taking a look at how to estimate arch and garch models in starter. And a few other things while we're at it, but you'll see as we come along. Now, you already see I've cheated a little bit by setting up almost everything we need. So what does that mean? I have loaded in a data set called SAP 500, which everybody could find their own starter version. I have created a business calendar, set the time variable, and generate the returns. All things we're not going to talk so much about today because those you've learned in other videos, right? So before we actually estimate arch and garch models, let's first remember what are they even? These are models for the variance equation. That doesn't mean we shouldn't specify a mean equation, Ra rather we actually have to specify the full model. So typically I would like to first run an AR1 model because it's a nice simple style model to have as your mean equation. And in this case here, we just run it as a regular regression, which is returns regressed on the lag of itself, hence the name auto regressive. Running so here, we get some nice results here, seeing there actually this looks like what I would say a white noise, but that's a discussion you can find back in one of my lectures, for instance. The first thing we would like to do is to test for arch effects. So I'm nicely writing up everything here today so everybody can see what's going on. Because first we need to actually see is to actually evidence of this autoregressive conditional heteroskedasticity, as this acronym stands for. And it's, yeah, it's a, it's quite a long name and it's a whole course on its own to be able to say this properly. But what we do here, we need an ESTAT command called ArchLM. So if I can spell correctly today, then this will be nice. We need to specify for how many lags we are testing for. So in this particular instance here, I'm testing up until and including five lags of our model. This nice little test here will see whether there actually are arch effects present. And what we can see over here with this simple test here is that order one, no, two, three, four, five, yes. Hence there's enough evidence to know we should actually try an arch model. So we can actually just go ahead and try so. And how do you actually do that in starter, you may think? Well, it's actually quite easy because there is a package just called arch. It's already in starter, if I'm not mistaken, otherwise install it. And all you have to do is run it as a regular regression you just did before. So you first specify your mean equation in this command, followed by a comma, and then you have to specify what your variance equation would look like. In this case here, since we tested for arch of order five, we found evidence of it, let's try to run an arch of order five. And here, all we have to do is similar again, we use the arch one slash five, because that indicates one up until and including five. If we just write a five here, it will only test for the fifth, it will only include the fifth lag, which is not what we're interested in. And what you can now see here, you can actually see we have now run the arch model and it looks much different than just testing for it, of course. We have our mean equation on top, just like before, looks very similar, not the same because the estimation technique actually differed a little bit. For all these details here, I'll revert right back to one of my lectures on my channel if you wanna take a closer look or just consult your course book. And you can see down below here, we have the arch model specified. And then you can go into interpretation of what each of these means. Not for now. We're just gonna here to see how you actually do it. So we ran an arch five, but then the question you may ask yourself, does this capture enough? And this is where we have the GARCH model, which is just a generalized arch. So generalized autoregressive conditional heteroskedasticity. I practiced, I guess. And the most common one is what is known as a GARCH 1-1 model. Again, how do you do it? We simply just need to specify arch again, because it's the same package. What I'm gonna do here, I'm first gonna copy paste a little bit, and we're gonna change this model here in the back. We add one arch term, and then we add one garch option. So arch and garch. This is all you need to be able to run a garch 1-1 model. Running it here indicates clearly that there's evidence or that it's valid to run such a model because the garch term here is highly significant. Furthermore, we see that here that the conditional variance is stable. As you add these two together here, then the sum should not be larger than one. So that's not so bad, is it now? But the thing about these arch and garch is they're symmetric shock models, or if that's even correct to say, but they show that a shock to the variance is the same regardless whether it is negative or a positive shock. There are a few models that can test for this or change this little fact here. And one of them is also known as the e-garch. 
So as a little extra today, I also show the eGuards because that is a straightforward extension. You also have a GJR model, for instance, but there's also many, many others you can try. You can always try to look at the help file for Arch because it has a long, long list of different models to run. These are just a small, small snapshot of what you can actually do with it. So in this particular case, we still use the Arch command. We still have exactly the same upfront as a mean equation. But now again, we change everything after the comma. And now we change it to e arch one And then we change it to e garge one So it looks quite similar to what we had before. But this is all it takes to be able to run an e garge which is just the same as a garge in the sense that now, as an addition, we can check for asymmetric shocks. And what we do here, what you need to know is that you have to look at the e arch variable. In this particular instance, it is insignificant, so there's no evidence of a symmetry. However, you would look at if this was a positive coefficient as it is now, you would see that a negative shock has a larger impact on the variance than an equivalent positive shock, meaning there's evidence of leverage effects. And one thing that's good to know, had this been a minus the other way around, of course, it would be positive effects, which is also known as a hype effect for some. You find this typically back in crypto quite a lot. And yeah, these are just a few things you can do with the Arch package here in Stata. I hope you learned something today, and I hope to see you back for another class in Stefan's classroom. Bye-bye. Mm -hmm.